And Smock, New York City versus the world feels like this tournament. But here we go. Robin Wolf, I'm excited. All right, we got the Yers in the crowd already. It looks like this is going to be an exciting top 64. They struck to Pokemon Stadium and oh, look at that nice, beautiful root music. <laughs> Definitely more calming than the match is going to be. You know, I really like how um, I really like how Jewel just kind of he knows his confirms on the character. I mean, I was playing with Robin a little bit last night after venue closed, just because I don't, you know, you don't, you rarely see this character, especially in top 64s at big tournaments like this. And the character has a lot of like smart aerials with the Levin sword. Yeah, for sure. Even a lot of these characters like Robin, you expect to see, oh, well, there's not a lot of US representation, but I'm sure there's a good Japanese player oh, or sure. a good player from Europe. No, it's Jewel really holding it down with the character. And as you see already, he's moving. All of those little uh, arc, uh, arc fire and L thunder charges Ooh, beautiful. just help him move around a lot, and you see he's using that thunder to its fullest. Right. No, the arc thunder there was, you know, you really have to look at Robin as like a setup character, getting these, getting the arc fire setups into any of the thunder moves from Robin. Super creative. Using the Levin sword. I mean, this isn't loss for Smock. Yeah, no, not at all. Actually, Smock, look at that, using the Wolf. Um, Wolf, one of those top tiers in this game that's really, uh, I would say, arguably one of the more honest characters. I mean, he's got that down smash, which uh, down smash is down smash, but Smock is definitely going to have to work for all of his kills, have to work for all of his confirms, and right now he's struggling to take this first stock off as Jewel dances around him there. Oh, but he's going to get that dash attack, setting up for a nice edge guard. Smock. Ooh, F tilt at the ledge, not gonna catch Jewel. Yeah, no, not yet. And I really like how, I don't think Jewel is necessarily like, quote, camping, but he's just kind of keeping his space, realizing that like, he knows like how far like El Thunder goes, like what the proper spacing is on it. And it just seems like Smock is kind of having trouble finding his way of kind of around that, mm -hmm. but he's gonna take that first stock. Yeah, it's actually something I was gonna point out about Jewel's play, so. In general, what you mentioned, where he doesn't camp necessarily, but he just stays right outside of your range with those amazing Levin Nairs. And as you saw earlier, he used that double thunder where, oh wow, I, I could have sworn that was going to kill. Um, he used that double thunder to catch Smock thinking, oh, I can run in now, but instead getting caught in dash attack at the ledge. Jewel takes a whole stock lead. Right. And you have to watch, because Jewel's actually gotten kills both times with arc fire setups at the ledge. And I feel like Smock just has to kind of figure it out. It could be it could be just matchup inexperience, but going for the double down smash, goes for the grab, doesn't get it either. Mm -hmm. Smock doing a good job with his landing aerials. He seems to be able to find a lot of times where Jewel wants to land. It's just when Jewel gets his feet on the ground that Smock is struggling to get in. Oh, awesome grab on that roll. He needs this stock now if he wants to keep it close, but Jewel gonna come back with the Levin Sword. Mm -hmm. You know, Smock is really using those F tilts, those, those downward angled uh, little scratches from Wolf are so good at two framing and catching people trying to recover, but he hasn't been able to get it, though there that dash attack is what's gonna seal the deal. Right, and we're on last stock at 51, not undoable for a character like Wolf. I would like to start seeing him start using uh, Wolf Nair a little bit more. We know the move is a little bit disjointed, but he's just having such a hard time getting in. Mm -hmm. But he keeps trying to initiate with this dash attack, and I don't know. Yeah, you, look, Jewel is at, he just understands that Smock wants to come in, and he's not committing to anything, tip, uh, anything too tough. He's just going for that small charge thunders and those Levin Sword Nairs, but now... Ooh, that, ooh. that was kind of scary, and I mean, this is the first time we've seen Jewel kind of at disadvantage. Kind of scary on the ledge, but he's going to find his way back in just a little bit. I mean, with a character like Robin, I'm sure, a lot of just like a lot of characters in general, you do want to keep center stage unless you're super confident in that in that edge guarding. But I wouldn't yeah. want to be above Wolf either. No, absolutely Ooh, not. The wow. Nosferatu going to nice, nice catch. Mm -hmm. You can see Jewel pops off in his seat a little bit. If he had missed that Nosferatu, that might have been it. Wolf has that F smash, oh that up God. smash. Oh wow, he's moving Did with the ball. Did you see that? That like, was crazy. The drop combos? That was amazing. And I really like the use of Nosferatu there, just kind of, you know, like giving himself some, you know, giving him a little bit more health. Yeah, but as you see, Smock, even though he's still down in percent, he basically brought this back. Wolf has the tools to kill right now. And that's that's Tipper. Hit. Wow. Yeah. That was close. I mean, we were singing Jewel's praises the entire time, but mm -hmm. that was awesome yeah. of Smock to just bring it back like that. I mean, close set, close set for sure. And I'm just a reminder, it is best of five. So the band's coming out, Battlefield's Yoshi's Story. 
What do you think about Yoshi's story? We got in a little bit of a conversation about it yesterday. Yeah, I think so. The stage in general or for Robin? Just in general. Okay, so I actually, um, at first, wasn't a fan of Yoshi's story. I thought it was going to make the stage list a little too homogenous with two triplat stages. But after seeing how small the stage is and cramped, it definitely plays a different role right. than Battlefield. And I think banning the two of them is mainly just because Smock wants to get rid of all of his movement options from Jewel. Jewel's doing a great job controlling space, but when Smock gets in, he gets in. Right, and you can see that now playing a little bit more aggressively now with the aerials. Um, Jewel switching over to male Robin, obviously, like the character color switch is always the, it's like a mindset thing. Oh yeah, Down but Smash you see gonna, that. Down gonna snatch him a little bit, goes for it again. Doesn't mm -hmm. quite get it, but looking a lot different than game one. Yeah, Smock, Smock definitely has him in the corner, as you were going to talk about. It's it's very clear that Smock knows now his win condition against Robin. Um, in the beginning, when you're fighting a new character, especially one you don't fight a lot, you have to struggle to find, how do I win here? Right. And it looks like Smock knows, if I just trap him at the ledge, Robin can't do a whole lot. <laughs> and as you can see, he's definitely capitalizing. That down tilt sending him the opposite way. Jewel's struggling to get in again. I just love, like... You can tell just Jewel knows his character. You know, the way, like, the way that um, Levin Sword pops up, like, after he's done, he grabs it, he throws it. Like, it's just really impressive, just crazy to watch. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, as you mentioned that, you saw he was off stage. He did three forward airs just to get rid of that Levin Sword so that he can recharge it sooner. Right. He doesn't want to lose it in a bad situation, but right now he's going to get into a bad situation from that back throw. Smock up for the first time this set, really. And. Jewel, not maybe not too much of a mountain to climb, but I like that. I like the catch with the grab. Doesn't get any aerial off of it. But here we go. Like I said, game one, you know, we didn't see too much of Wolf Nair, but now I really like how he's kind of like approaching more with aerial. I mean, Wolf's aerials are insane. Yeah, right now you can tell that Smok is just playing an oppressive zone breaker kind of strategy here. He's not overextending. He's not going off stage. He's just waiting to see what Jewel can do because Robin doesn't have that get off me th frame three nair like other characters do. Right. He has to resort to using a Levin Sword or an Elf Thunder or something like that. And boom, right there, forward air into back air. Smock is absolutely smothering Jewel in the corner. For sure. <laughs> the Levin Sword play here. Oh my god. <laughs> Could that you imagine if that crazy. Levin Sword, the Levin Sword drop into the laser would have been funny. Yeah, but the even Nosferatu. though it didn't, that coverage was insane. He oh, drops it sure. down, and then if he tries to jump up, the laser's right there to catch him. But we're going to see kind of this play again, the the Thunder Spam from Jewel. That was where Smok was kind of having a little bit of a hard time getting in, but that down smash is going to put him right back in. And both of these players right now, stone cold faces. They're really trying to do their best here in top 64. You Fair don't not going to take it, early. surprisingly. But goes for the read on the down smash, won't take it. A little bit of sticky play from both of them. The Fair not going to take it either from Smok yet. Catches him with the arc fire. So the dash attack. Yeah, and right now it's actually Jewel who's struggling to get this stock. Back air gets the weakest of hits, the most sourest of spots. Right. And oh, finally with the half charge thunder, gonna take that stock. Right. Smock trying to find his way back in again. I think Jewel's completely. I mean, we've been talking about how like Jewel's been stuck on the edge, but I think Jewel's completely content just jumping around on the edge. Gonna get the arc thunder there. A little bit more percent, but Smock gonna just come in dash attack. And you were mentioning last game that when Smock was struggling, he was struggling because he was looking for those dash attacks that were ill-advised. Now you see Smock is landing his dash attacks, and oh, he's that gonna make that close. recovery. <laughs> but yeah, it seems like Smock has figured out where his options work and where they don't. Ooh, oh, oh my God! Down the smash. Hard read. Oh God! The crowd felt that. We felt that. That was kind of nice. Jewel bringing it back. Don't call it a comeback just yet. Gonna go for the arc fire and dash attack. Now Jules doing his patented oppressive play of his own. Right. Arc fire. Oh. Ooh, he air dodges out of the arc fire. That's the first time that we've seen an arc fire land on stage that some, that Smock was stuck in that wasn't converted into a kill. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, Jewel actually didn't have his Levin Sword there, so that was one of the reasons he was right. going for that dash attack, but he didn't get it. Now Jules still moving around, gets that Nair. It looks like Jules really picking up the pace here. He's definitely boxing out with Robin and that thunderous sword of his. Ooh. Yeah, Jules taking us all the way back. It's interesting because, you know, with a character like uh, Robin that is highly based around projectiles, like the Thunder, um, I'm surprised we haven't seen more Reflect from uh, Smock with the Reflector. But, I mean, 
I wonder what it would do. Oh, God, that was close. Tries to go for the F smash read, but Jules saying nah. That's scary. Jules still can't take the stock. 174. And I think the percents were just around this place last time, too. 186. That Nair not going to take it. But that arc fire will. Going to kill Raw, which is pretty crazy. Usually gets those confirms, But air dodge down. Not going to die just yet. Signs of life in Jewel with that forward air off the ledge. Smock trying to find his way in. Honestly, not. it doesn't take much to kill Robin at this percent, especially on the ledge. But that F smash will. And that'll bring us to our game three. Smock up 2-0, but let's be real. This is kind of a close set. Yeah, for sure. I don't think anybody, especially in Tri-State, would have expected this kind of upset here. Um, Smock, obviously an incredible player in his own right. One for of the sure. best in that area of Canada. Um, but I think in general, you expect your boys to do well at a tournament like this. He's got the home field advantage. It's just that Smock is playing really, really well. Um, and let's see, do we have any updates in the loser's bracket or the winner's Not bracket? Not quite yet. We'll talk about it after game three. We're, we're just going to play on stadium this entire set if it goes down to it. Yeah. Honestly, we're banging out to the music. I feel like we're feeling good. Yeah, obviously. And I love... Um, I love how slow they kind of take neutral in the beginning. Um, oh, damn. OK, that Levin sword hurts. <laughs> yeah. 36 from two aerials from Robin at low percent. It doesn't feel good. Smock going to get the smash attack. Mm -hmm. But you see, you know, Jewel was using those nares to keep Smock boxed out. But now that Smock is the one with the home field advantage and more specifically the stage advantage, it looks like those nares aren't nearly as effective because Smock can play a little bit safer and a little bit slower. Right. Now we're back to neutral. Going for those thunders, rolls out of the corner. Good job from Jewel getting that stage control. Ooh, there we go. Like I said, the reflect. That's what I've been wanting to see. I wanted to see how Jewel's going to like work around that. They call you Lyric of Wisdom for a reason. Pretty smart read on that reflect. Big facts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I just like how, um, like, I don't feel like they're camping each other. I just feel like they're just trying to find a way in that doesn't require them to just go in like straight at it. That up smash gonna take first stock, but Jewel fires back. Yep, this game three is looking a little bit different. Both are trying to swing for the fences in the early game. Ooh, air, dodge air dodge off stage. Down He's gonna make it gonna back. Connect. Don't tout Robin's recovery. It's pretty good. And now that's the third time that Jewel has stood up uh, with a getup attack right into nice. uh, a shielded forward tilt. So he's going to have to watch out for that option. It's gotten him killed in the last two games to end the games. And if he keeps get, getting up with that dash up, ta get up attack, sorry, um, he'll end up losing that stock again. Nosferatu coming out. I mean, any percent that he can get. I love to come up fair stage. from the ledge. Yeah, it's so good. For sure. He's been getting a lot of mileage off of that forward air on the stage. Um, I think it's a little bit of a better option than that get up attack. These item drops are so good by Jewel. They're so sick. Yeah. Ooh, nice jump over Tomahawk grab. Goes for the forward throw instead of the back throw. I'm not sure if that was a misinput or just DI mix up. Yeah, I don't exactly know when that uh, that back throw kills. It might have actually been enough, but maybe Smock was thinking, I don't want to stale it just in case. Um, both of these players are really good at saving their stocks, and so I think that Smock knows I want to keep all of my options ready and raring to go. Gets that forward tilt. Nice. Wow! Jumps over the thunder yeah, right no. to get that forward tilt. I think Smock has, over the course of the match, figured out, all right, you know what? This projectile is pretty good. That projectile is pretty good. But I love how he just jumped over and just uh, attacked there. That was really smart. Mm -hmm. You can Back tell. throw is definitely going to take this stack of one. It just seems like Smock has figured out more and more where Robin wants to be and how he wants to be there. And it looks like Smock is just willing to be like, you know what? I'll throw a forward air in your face. I'm going to put an air in your face. You can't do a whole lot about it. Right. Smock with the throw into the fair. This could be curtains for Jewel. And that throw was so smart, too, because it grab armored the falling Levin sword. Everything Smock does is with a purpose. That's the first time that we've seen uh, Smock come back onto stage, not mm -hmm. going to the ledge. I think he's finally realized, oh, god, this guy's good with his ledge traps. <laughs> Might as well just avoid the ledge. Yeah. And now Jules spacing again. This is where he likes to be most. Great jump. Oh, falling up air in the back air. That's a good confirm, but it's not going to do it. There's the Levin sword. Dangerous situation for Smock. How's he going to get back? And he does. Back to the Pokeball, back to safety. 
sticky neutral here from both of these players right now. Smok wants just this in. He knows that he can convert a lot of it. Ooh, okay, the laser uh, clanking with the thunder. And once again, Smok is just living these crazy percents. 162. I've never seen percents so red before. Arc Thunder not going to take it, but it took down most of his shield. Ooh, nice, beautiful wait. I love that. Going to arc fire on the shield. Smock waiting super patiently. Yep, and there's that forward tilt again. If he ends three games with forward tilt, That's I'm going to be upset. I wow. think he was going for the ledge. Yeah, Usually sure. when you see a character like um, Zelda, Robin, and they don't like and they like barely miss the ledge that it, they were definitely going for the ledge. Yeah, he definitely wanted to snap there. Canada coming through and snapping of their mm -hmm. own. Mm -hmm. Smock with the 3-0 on Jewel.